Today our lesson is combining sentences. We have several ways to combine sentences. We will start from first method, coordination that makes up compound sentences. Then we'll move on to subordination that makes complex sentences. What's next is a little bit complicated, and that's compound complex sentences. Finally, we'll have a look at other ways to combine ideas and those problems we must avoid. Now, let's have a look at the first method, coordination. Coordination is coordinating conjunctions to create compound sentences. What are coordinating conjunctions, and what are they? Well, here we offer a useful acronym to help you remember them, and that's F A N B O Y S or fanboys. Fanboys stands for far and nor but or yet and so. These seven conjunctions have different functions. We use for to show reasons. For example, we'd say I'm tired. For I worked hard, and means there are two equal ideas going together, such as being tired and want to rest for a few minutes. When you see nor, there must be negative choices or alternatives. That is, there's nothing you would like to take. But means something different or opposite, or offers choices. Or alternatives. Yet, it's also showing contrast between ideas. Finally, so is indicating a causal relationship. We link two independent clauses with coordinating conjunctions. By independent clause, it means the clause contains a subject and a verb. And by the way, always put a comma in front of the conjunction. Beside coordinating conjunctions, we can also use conjunctive adverbs to create compound sentences. Here is a brief list of conjunctive adverbs. We choose some of them to see how they work in a sentence. We use as a result of to point out causal relationships, so the phrase can be replaced by therefore, consequently, hence. Thus and then, to show contrary or reservation, we have however, nevertheless, otherwise, and on the other hand, to add ideas to the original one, we put moreover and also. When we write down in fact or for example, readers will expect us to emphasize, specify, or elaborate our ideas. If we want to compare different aspects, we can also use similarly. Conjunctive adverbs also goes between two independent clauses. This time, they follow a semicolon. Now, let's move on to the second way to combine sentences: subordination. This method helps create complex sentences. A complex sentence is a combination of a dependent and an independent clause. We then use subordinating conjunctions to join these two clauses. Here we have a list of common subordinating conjunctions. Now let's try to combine these two sentences. My neighbors are considerate, and they never play loud music. Of course, we can create a compound sentence because we have two complete sentences, which contains a subject and a verb. Nevertheless, we can also make them into a complex sentence. How do we do so? We recognize the relationship of the two sentences first. We can find a causal relationship between these two sentences, so we can use because. To point it out, we first transform the first sentence into a dependent clause by adding a subordinating conjunction because, 
The other sentence they never play loud music is the core claim. That is the main clause, and we leave it with the original form. Now we put these two clauses together. In other words, we use subordinating conjunctions to join one dependent and one independent clauses to create a complex sentence. Here we give another try. We have six sentences in one paragraph. Can we make it simpler? Sure. Once we find out the causal or chronological relationship between sentences. We can make them into one complex sentences. Here we have two examples. The author's dog ran away because of the firework, and the dog was found when the animal control officer during his morning rounds. These sets of sentences can be rewritten into two complex sentences. If the dependent clause goes in front of the main clause. We need to set it off with a comma. Let's see the example below. So, what is a compound complex sentence? Consider the following sentence: Before he learned how to operate a computer, is a dependent clause with a subordinating conjunction before. He had trouble with his typewritten assignment, and now he produces clean and attractive material. Are independent clauses with subjects and verbs. Here we have one dependent clause and two independent ones, and this is a compound complex sentence. Again, look at the passage with six sentences. As aforementioned, we can combine separated sentences as complex sentences. Now, if we want to make the relationship between sentences even closer, we can once again combine the complex sentences and create one compound complex sentence. Now, we have three kinds of sentence combination. Let's learn other ways to combine ideas. First, a positive, and a positive is a noun. Or a noun phrase that follows a noun or pronoun and renames it. In other words, the noun and the appositive after it refer to the same object. For example, for these two sentences, we know Susan is not only the scorer of the team but a quick and strong player. We now combine the sentence with an appositive. A noun phrase that reads "a quick and strong player," and we get the sentence: Susan, a quick and strong player, is the leading scorer on the team. Second, use a prepositional phrase to modify the noun in front of it. Number three, subject dropping. When the subjects in each part of the sentence are the same. We can delete the later one. Number four, participle phrase. This is using a group of words that includes a participle, such as words ended with ing or ed. Here we can see the example: John rowed smoothly and reached the shore. We first write a participle phrase: rolling smoothly. And then combine the two sentences describing John's behavior. Please be aware of omissions. First, do not omit a necessary subject in a sentence with two verbs. For example, when talking about the cost and its duration of a car, we need to give the subject, the car, to both clauses. So that readers can understand, we are talking about two qualities at the same time. Second, verbs. Do not omit verbs that are needed because of a change in the number of the subject or a change of tense. Sometimes we use that 
as a conjunction. If there is a dependent clause going after the conjunction that, that should not be omitted if there is danger of misleading the sentence. And watch the prepositions. If we are writing sentences that include idiomatic, time, and parallel phrases, these phrases should always go after a proposition. Now, let's see how much we understand the combination of ideas. Let's combine the sentences on the left side first. We first combine the sentences that indicate chronological relationship with when. Then, we use a coordinating conjunction to connect the other independent clause. Here, we all put end. So, in each sentence, we have a dependent clause and two independent clauses, which help to create a compound complex sentence. Now, please help correct the omissions. Can you solve the problems? Yes. The first one needs prepositions, so that we have love for and patience with. The second one, do you know what should be written? Yes, it needs a subject to let the readers know what went off. It's the gun. Third one, no problem. It also needs a preposition. Next. We need a word to tell if it's us or the car is going to hit the tree. If we put a that as a conjunction for the dependent clause, we know it's the car that's going to hit the tree. Finally, the sentence is talking about money and expenses. Since we have two subjects to be modified, we should pair each subject with a verb. So the expenses were burdensome. Now, let's review today's lesson. We have three kinds of sentence combination. A compound sentence is joining two independent clauses with coordinating conjunctions. Fan boys, remember? Hope it can help you recognize them. A complex sentence is putting one dependent and one independent clauses together with subordinating conjunctions. A compound complex sentence is putting several independent clauses and more than one dependent clause together. We also have some other strategies to put ideas together, such as using a positives, prepositional phrase, subject dropping, and participle phrases. Be careful when combining sentences. Improper omissions like omitting necessary subject, verbs, conjunctions, and prepositions should be avoided. Great job! That's the lesson for today. Thanks for joining us. This online course is founded by the Ministry of Education.